Praise the Lord. Welcome to our brief Bible reflections. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We have a reason to thank God for his grace and love. And the Lord continues to fulfill his promises in our lives as we trust in him. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. Yesterday we read verse 1 to 6. Today we are looking at verse 7 to 9. The Bible says, Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to, to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. But the word of God is not chained. Yes, this is Timothy being encouraged by Paul. And Paul is making a very sincere prayer for Timothy, that the Lord may give him understanding. Understanding for what or why is he telling him so? He's telling him that consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember the three things we talked about yesterday. This is the three things in a Christian life. He talked about a soldier, an athlete, a farmer. And uh, these three occupations need a lot of grace and perseverance for you and me to succeed as a good soldier, as a good athlete, as a hardworking farmer. It is a call to perseverance. And no wonder Paul is telling Timothy or he's praying for Timothy, may the Lord give you understanding. Because as a soldier, a good soldier, you should not stop fighting before the battle is finished. And the Lord is calling us to persevere, to continue fighting, to stand strong, and we shall see his victory. As a good athlete, you should not stop running before the race is over. We should move on. We should continue. We should pray that the Lord may give us the grace. And no wonder Paul is saying, may the Lord give you understanding. As a hardworking farmer, we should not stop before the harvest is complete. For us to see the fruit, we should continue dedicating our lives to God. And the understanding that Paul is praying for is the same that we would pray concerning our very lives today. There are so many things that would make us forget who we are, that we are soldiers, that we are in a race that we are like that hardworking farmer. There are so many things that may come to block or to hinder us. Remember that we are uh, called by God. And Paul is praying that, yes, this Jesus that I talk about, he died and rose again. And this gospel about Jesus, you know, remember the, that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And because of this, I have ended up even into chains. Jesus is the truth. And Paul is pointing Timothy to the truth that Timothy may understand that Jesus died and rose again. And this is the truth. And because of holding on to this truth, I have even ended into chains. But the good news is this. Yes, I'm in chains, but the gospel is not chained. Sometimes we suffer as believers and the enemy would want to make us feel as though even the word that we proclaim is in chains. Paul is helping us to see that yes, I may be in chains, but the gospel is still powerful. The gospel remains just as we say that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. I may be chained, but the gospel is still very, very powerful. Paul is reminding Timothy that sometimes you may suffer, but the word, if you cling on to this word, you may seem like you are in chain, but the word of God will do great and wonderful things in your life. The Lord is calling us to persevere, to wait upon him, to trust in him, and this gospel, nothing can hinder the word of God to do what God has, in, has intended about it. Let us cling to the word. Let us hold fast to this word. 
let us remain focused, knowing that he who called us did not call us to fail, but he has call, called us to succeed. Let us put our trust in God. Yes, not just admiring Christ as a di at a distance. Let us commit ourselves to him even when we suffer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom.